Hey guys, welcome back once again. Uh, recently, I did a video on uh, the Marvels. I did a reaction to the uh, up and coming movie that they just came out with. Uh, this is from uh, Jesse Grant. It says, uh, the Marvels is officially the biggest flop in MCU history. I did not go see it, but uh, let's check out, see what this guy has to say. Time to open up your calendars and mark down the day because the MCU is officially dead. You're dead. You are dead. The MCU is just dead. That's it. You're dead. We knew this day was fast approaching, but we were all wondering which film would actually do it. Which film would kill the behemoth that was the MCU? And in a way, it's quite prophetic that it was the Marvels, because it was Captain Marvel 1 that first raised some eyebrows amongst the fans, as the storytelling clearly took its first dip when it came to the MCU. And so now the Marvels has completely finished the job, as the opening weekend numbers are officially in, and it's worse than expected. The Marvels only brought in $48 million domestically in its opening weekend. <laughs> uh, does anyone want me to do it again? Now, many were predicting around $60 million, which already sounded horrible, but my god, $48 Below million its mark. downright a Atrocious. But the death of the million. MCU isn't just the Marvel's fault. It was an accumulation of projects that brought down this universe that no one thought could die. And people. Exactly. See, earlier in the video, he said it would take one. They were waiting on the one video, one movie to end it. But I thought it was a, a bunch of video, a bunch of movies that came out that kind of started messing up the MCU. But. Let's see what else. would succeed forever. And it just goes to prove that you can never get too big to ignore the basics, which is exactly too big what to Marvel fail. Did, That's not true. The exact reason the MCU failed in just four short years. Because they hit their peak in 2019 and they thought they could invest less time and less money into the creation of their pro. The last Marvel of uh, the last MCU movie that I saw was the last Avengers, Avengers Endgame. I have not seen any movie after. None of the Spider Man's, none of the uh Doctor Strange, none of those. So uh, it started going downhill right after the Avengers Endgame. Makes sense, that's when I stopped watching. Jacks and still reap the same benefits. It's so dumb. So dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! Well, think again, Marvel, because fans aren't as dumb as you think, and they can sniff out lazy writing from a mile away, and that they did. Because it all began with Captain Marvel 1, which was a definite... I like Captain Marvel, I'll say it again, I liked it. ...from the MCU. Because for the first time, they ignored the entire hero's journey, which is a structure that has worked for centuries and had worked for the last decade for Marvel, with heroes like Captain America and Iron Man, who followed the hero's journey to a T, and audiences loved them. Because the reason the hero's journey has been in place for centuries, if not thousands of hero's years, journey. is because the thing works. When it comes to telling a story, you have to develop the character in a way that that people actually enjoy them and want to see how that character will continue to evolve. And the only way you can... You're getting scammed and you're honestly dumb if you haven't caught on to this, but you were supposed to get $6,400 from the government last night. Let me explain what this is about. Way you can do Sorry about that, that. by following the proven structure that works when developing a character. And yes, you can have some fun with it, you can toy with that structure in a way, but you have to follow that structure, otherwise, the characters aren't going to be relatable and people are just going to turn off, which is exactly what the fans have done when it comes to the modern MCU. Because the most important element of the hero's journey is their imperfections and their setbacks, because that's what makes them both relatable and 
inspirational in the way that they grow and evolve into a better hero from those certain setbacks. And we saw it with Captain America, where he is frozen for decades and loses time with loved ones and suffers deep emotional pain that he has to try and deal with moving forward. And we can all relate to this as we all wish we could get time back with our loved ones and our family. And he then has to come to grips with this pain and grow from it, and he also has to deal with this pain in every single movie moving forward, and he finds himself constantly going into conflict to avoid the pain, as he'd rather throw himself into work than deal with his own emotional pain and his own past history. That we can all understand, that we can all relate to, and we come to love Captain America for that, because he deals with the pain and he actually grows from it, and that's what makes him a hero that people love. And that right there is called character development, yet Marvel seem to find that unimportant now when it comes to their modern heroes, and let me explain. Because when you look at Captain Marvel, she is utterly perfect in every single way, and she's also unstoppable, which I like to call unrelatable. And let's be honest here, she's also just completely... I disagree with that. Superman's so unstoppable. Find an emotional relationship arc he has one that weakness, so that makes it alright. ...and make them more relatable, and make us understand them more, but apparently not. The only arc in Captain Marvel is that she realizes ultimate power is within her and doesn't come from her superpowers, and that she's been perfect all along, and all she has to do is dig into her inner awesomeness to be better than everyone else. That is not something people can relate to. So she never had to work on her powers. She just had powers and just knew how to do everything, we right? when it came to Star Wars with Daisy Ridley's character, where she had the exact same character arc where all she had to do was dig into her inner awesomeness and people hated it. I agree with that. She didn't have no training and was able to beat that one dude. Utterly insufferable to the point where we don't give a damn what happens to that character moving forward because if they get written out of the MCU, people will be happy because people don't like them because they're arrogant, egotistical, and suffer no setbacks and the only issues in their story, the only issues in their life stem from everyone around them because they're so perfect and everyone else can't live up to the same perfection. No one's life is like that so of course no one wants to see that in a character because there's nothing to understand there and there's nothing that we can empathize with. And this perfect character syndrome has been the absolute downfall for the MCU because once again we saw it in a show like She-Hulk, which was ridiculed by fans everywhere. So he's bringing it straight to character art, character development. Now these these um, latest heroes don't have any kind of character development. They just have their powers and immediately know how to do everything. And that's what he's saying is the downfall of the new Marvels that they're going on with. Because that character was arguably the most insufferable character yet to come out of the MCU, and for good reason. Because there's literally a scene where she tells Bruce Banner, who was literally abused as a kid, that he knows nothing about dealing with anger for these reasons. Oh, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or dumb. They went straight feminist with the She-Hulk. That's hurt. why. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. And then we see it again in Because she's a woman, Ultimata, right? Where Ant-Man's okay. daughter is a complete egotistical know-it-all and we're supposed to like this character when she tells her own father that he's a disgrace even though he literally saved the world from complete doom, complete obliteration, but no, he's a disgrace of a father because he doesn't live up to her 16-year-old beliefs of what a good person should be. Now, of course, no one's going to like this character because they're 16 and act like they know everything and they go around bossing. Didn't see this one. Didn't see this last Ant-Man. would actually enjoy that character and it just doesn't make sense. Because it's almost as if Marvel forgot what 
what made their characters love for a decade and forgot that in order for fans to want to see your films, they have to be invested in your characters. But that's impossible when they are just so insufferable. No one wants to see the next movie. No one wants to see that character develop. Yet Marvel go and green light a season two for She-Hulk, even though no one liked that series. And there were two newly introduced characters that were relatable and people actually enjoyed, one being Yelena in Black Widow, who suffers great family trauma and grows from that into becoming a good hero that people actually cared to see how she would develop in the MCU. Then we had Shang-Chi, who while the movie wasn't perfect, was a character who had to face the demons of his past relationship with his father and overcome that. And we can all relate to those stories, we can all understand them, and that allows their character to develop and allows us to care where they're going to go in the future of the MCU, mm. but they've just pissed those characters off and have chosen to focus on the very characters that people despise. Because at the end of the day, audiences go to a movie to be entertained, and when it comes to a superhero movie in particular, to also be inspired. And when you fail to do that, the audience members will go somewhere else, and now Marvel has officially realised that, but it is way too late. Because by the time they actually focus on characters that audiences care about, it's going to be way too late because due to the writing process and the production process, we're not going to see those movies until 2027 at the earliest. And we've seen that with Spider-Man, where people loved Spider-Man No Way Home, at a time where people were already talking about superhero fatigue and how the MCU wasn't performing the way it used to, Spider-Man No Way Home came out and absolutely destroyed at the box office. Spider-Man did amazing. Got great reviews because people love that character because they developed the character. Guardians of the and Galaxy and Volume 3 did really good also, right? Spider-Man No Way Home. They say nothing about the character of Spider-Man and now have only released that they're just starting to work on the script and that the movie will come out at the earliest in 2027, which is absolutely ridiculous. And so we have no choice but to realize that the MCU has taken its final breath and we all know it. And hell, even their own cast members know it, with Brie Larson looking like she's going to leave the MCU and Tom Holland clearly focusing on other things right now and all power to them because this ship has well and truly sunk. Ah. However, Robert Downey Jr. does look to be making a return to the MCU, but let's not act like this is out of a love for storytelling and more so out of a love for money because the paycheck for his return must be absolutely insane because I do think the MCU know that their last and final hope at a Hail Mary victory will be through bringing back Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, and Scarlett Johansson. They have However, to bring them back to like save it? That or is it already dead? Movie or for one television series. However, it definitely won't work in order to revive the MCU and bring them back for another 10-year run because I think their run has come to an end and I think it's time for audiences to move on because clearly they've had a good decade but they've completely shot themselves in the foot and it's time to focus on some other projects and some other franchises. So what Okay. Is the MCU dead? Can it bounce back? Can they save it with Tony Stark, Captain America, and Black Widow? Can they do that? Or is it already over? You guys let me know down in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. I really appreciate it. Take care.